tonight with just three days to go. Both sides now in an all-out sprint to Election Day. Vice President Harris and Donald Trump storming through the battlegrounds. Take a look at this. Her plane, Air Force Two, and Trump's plane on the same runway at the same time. As Trump doubles down on his criticism of Liz Cheney. Plus, President Biden in a rare campaign appearance. And why Trump is campaigning in the blue state of Virginia today. A new warning from the FBI about fake videos like these being spread online. They now say some are being pushed by Russia. Our investigation. Who are the winners of Elon Musk's million-dollar lottery? I just never imagined in a million years that this would happen. How are they chosen? The conviction of one of the officers involved in the shooting that left Breonna Taylor dead. What happens next with the other officers? Catastrophic flooding in Spain. Hundreds dead. 10,000 troops now going in to help. And there's good news tonight. The gift from these football players that left their teacher in tears. This is NBC Nightly News with Jose diaz Ballard. Good evening. We are just three days until the election, which means that in reality, the candidates only have two more full days of campaigning. Vice President Harris started her day in Milwaukee, but then held rallies in Georgia and in North Carolina. This was the moment her plane on the left was on the same runway in North Carolina as former President Trump's plane. Trump started this morning with a rally in North Carolina, then a rally in the blue state of Virginia, and is heading back to North Carolina for another rally tonight. More than 70 million people have already voted in this election, but with the election this close, neither side is letting up. We have multiple reports tonight, including Kristen Welker, with new reporting about where their final campaign stops will be. But we begin with Gabe Gutierrez with a Harris campaign in North Carolina. Tonight, with early voting wrapping up in North Carolina, the final rush is on for both candidates in this critical battleground. Their planes even side by side on the tarmac. Make no mistake, we will win. Hello, North Carolina. This is going to happen. I have a, I predict, let's make a prediction. This will happen on Tuesday, I think, right? This will happen on Tuesday. Around the country, more than 70 million votes have already been cast. Why do you support the vice president? Because I want a better life in this country, and I want everybody to be united. What's the biggest issue in this race for you? Democracy. With the election now three days away, Vice President Harris also rallying supporters in battleground Georgia. I don't believe that people who disagree with me are the enemy. He wants to put them in jail. I will give them a seat at the table. Largely sidelined from the campaign trail in recent weeks, today President Biden speaking to union members in must-win Pennsylvania. Three days to election day, and the stakes couldn't be higher. Meanwhile, former President Trump with an unexpected stop, Virginia. Oh, we're going to win Virginia, you know that. We got to get out and vote. Not considered a swing state this year, but his team thinks it could be in play. It's very, very exciting to be here. First Trump rally ever. I feel like he's going to do really well. Harris also calling Trump's controversial comments this week about former Congresswoman Liz Cheney disqualifying. He doubled down on them last night. But if you gave Liz Cheney a gun and put her into battle facing the other side with guns pointing at her, she wouldn't have the courage or the strength or the stamina to even look the enemy in the eye. Gabe, early voting just ended a few hours ago there in North Carolina. How's turnout been? Yeah, Jose, it's been record-breaking here. More than half of North Carolina voters have already cast their ballots, and each campaign believes the high turnout nationwide favors them. Jose? Gabe Gutierrez in Charlotte. Thank you. With both candidates in North Carolina today, it's clear that despite Republicans winning the state in 10 of the last 11 presidential elections, it's very much in play this time. Dasha Burns reports from Greensboro. Tonight, both campaigns making a big push for North Carolina and its 16 electoral votes. We win this state, we're going to win the whole ball game, you know. The former president, who has never lost in this state, making four stops in the final three days of campaigning. At a rally in Gastonia, attacking the Biden-Harris response to Hurricane Helene. You've been through a lot. Your government has not helped you too much. 
Tonight, he'll make his way to Greensboro, a blue region in the purple state. Well, the former president's supporters have been lining up hours before he's scheduled to speak here, but this is also an early voting site, and voters on the other side of this complex have been casting their ballots on the last day of early voting here in North Carolina. North Carolina has toppled its previous early voting record, with Republicans outpacing Democrats by more than 50,000 votes. Voters determined to make their voices heard, even in communities hard hit by Hurricane Helene. People are, are motivated to vote and they want their voices heard, especially in a time of need. A Democrat hasn't taken North Carolina in a presidential race since 2008, but polls show a tight race here. NBC's Antonia Hilton is in Raleigh. It's taking up to two hours to get through this early voting line, and it's full of young and diverse voters, exactly the demographics Harris needs if she wants a chance at flipping this state. Meantime, in Greensboro, some people voting for the first time. First time voter, mm -hmm. how does it feel? Feels great, feels great. Feel like I got something accomplished. How did it feel today to cast your first vote? Feels good that I did my part. A close race in a critical state which could pave the path to the White House. And Dasha, Donald Trump has more stops in North Carolina planned between now and Election Day. Yeah, Jose really zeroing in. He's coming back tomorrow and then again on Monday. Jose? Dasha Burns in Greensboro, North Carolina. Thank you. I want to bring in Kristen Welker, moderator of Meet the Press. Kristen, thank you for being with thank us. You. you can tell a lot about what the campaign is thinking by where they go in these final days. You're absolutely right. Both candidates are spending some time today in the Sun Belt, but in the closing hours of this race, they are going to be in the blue wall states, which really could determine who wins the White House. Notably, former President Trump in traditionally blue Virginia today, his attempt to show strength in these closing hours of the race. Both candidates will make multiple stops in the critical battleground of Pennsylvania on the final day, Jose. It is a sign that the Keystone State could determine who wins this race. It is the state that has the biggest number of electoral votes. And Kristen, both campaigns have seized on controversial comments from the other side. Could yeah. they make a difference? It's a great question. Look, in a race this close, anything could have an impact. The Harris campaign believes that that Trump supporter who referred to Puerto Rico as garbage, that's resonating with undecideds. The Trump campaign downplaying that, saying, look, their focus is on trying to win over voters after President Biden made that gaffe about Trump supporters. We won't know, Jose until Election Day. Kristen Welker, thank you so very much. It's so great seeing great you. Great to and see you. Join Kristen tomorrow morning for Meet the Press. Steve Kornacki will have NBC's final election poll. Her guests include Georgia Senator Raphael Warnock and North Dakota Governor Doug, Ber Doug Bergram. And we've got a big week ahead. Join our election coverage on Tuesday, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And as we get closer to Election Day, there's a new warning tonight from the FBI about fake videos generated by Russia meant to undercut the vote here. Dana Griffin has details. The FBI with a rare warning today that videos like these... Three linked groups have been apprehended for rigging early voting. Including one claiming to implicate the husband of Kamala Harris in the Diddy home raids. Holmes lawyer paid Emhoff half a million dollars for that favor. Are fake videos and meant to interfere with the election. The FBI posting on X, these videos are not authentic, are not from the FBI, and the content they depict is false. Federal officials also sounding the alarm on yet another video linked to Russia falsely claiming Haitian immigrants voted illegally in Georgia using fake IDs. Yesterday we voted in Gwinnett County and today we are voting in Fulton County. It follows this fake video released last week purporting to show mail-in ballots for Donald Trump being ripped to shreds. It is Russian produced and specifically designed to go viral. The head of U.S. cybersecurity, Jen Easterly, says she's not surprised. This is all about spewing disinformation designed to undermine trust in our elections and to sow partisan discord. And we cannot allow our foreign adversaries to have a vote in our democracy. Federal officials say they're combating election interference by spreading accurate information, but encourage all voters to check the source of those online viral videos. Jose? Dana Griffin, thank you. Now to the conviction and possibly life in prison for a former police officer involved in the killing of Breonna Taylor.
a young medical worker, shot to death by police in her own home. Taylor's family now speaking out after years of calling for justice. Maggie Vespa reports. It took a lot of patience. It took a lot of time. 1,694 days. In front of a Kentucky courthouse, more than four years after Breonna Taylor's death, her grieving mom celebrates a guilty verdict. Thank God that he covered 12 jurors who chose to do the right thing. Breonna deserved justice. This after, a federal jury late Friday convicted now former Louisville police officer Brett Hankison of violating Taylor's civil rights during a botched drug raid in her apartment back in March 2020. Prosecutors arguing Hankison used excessive force, blindly firing 10 shots, hitting a glass door and window, but no people. The jury clearing the 48-year-old of violating the rights of Taylor's neighbors. NBC News reached out to Hankison's attorneys for comment, but received no response. Who was shooting at us? It was her house. Police said the raid was targeting Taylor's ex-boyfriend who lived at a different address. Her then-boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, seen here on body camera video, later said he fired... Coming up, the million-dollar giveaways everyone's talking about, but just who are the people who won those Elon Musk lotteries? Plus, the major changes in one key county in Battleground, Pennsylvania, is just made to speed up its election night. Count. We're back with a million-dollar question. Just who are those big winners that are getting checks from Elon Musk this election season? And how are they picked? NBC News tracked them down. George Solis has details. Tonight, a clear pattern is emerging about the winners of Elon Musk's million-dollar giveaways. NBC News finding at least nine of the 15 winners are either registered Republicans or are Republican-leaning. One million dollars. And at least one former Democrat. We've just, over the years, um, seen the party change and um, really kind of do a 180. All of the winners live in one of the seven battleground states and appear in photos or videos. Michigan winner Ron Conwell telling NBC News he found out he won when members of Musk's pro-Trump super PAC came to his door with an oversized check. I am a veteran, uh, four years at West Point. Father of three, North Carolina winner, Joshua Mayo, emotional over the life-changing, albeit scrutinized cash. But then a million dollars shows up at my door. Which is unheard of. <laughs> Musk, under growing legal scrutiny himself, accused of interfering with the federal election since announcing he'd randomly award prize money to voters who sign a pledge in favor of First and Second Amendment rights. If you already believe in the Constitution, you're just signing something you already believe, and you can win a million dollars. But how winners are chosen remains unclear. The Super PAC not responding to NBC News's multiple requests for comment about the process. All this as a civil lawsuit against the swing state sweepstakes heads back to court next week. Musk's lawyers' efforts to stall the case in federal court brought forth by Philly's Democratic DA failing Friday. The DA accusing Musk and the PAC of operating an illegal lottery and trying to influence voters. No criminal charges have been filed. But for now, the controversial cash contest continues with winners expected to be announced through Election Day. George Solis, NBC News. Still ahead, speeding up the vote count in the biggest battleground of all. We go behind the scenes in critical Pennsylvania. Plus, the big announcement today from TGI Fridays. Overseas in eastern Spain, the death toll is rising now more than 200 following one of the country's deadliest natural disasters. This was the horrific scene Tuesday when walls of water surged through Valencia. A year's worth of rain swept away cars and everything else in its path, leaving behind catastrophic damage. It's so dire, the government is now calling in some 10,000 troops to help, while armies of volunteers have been bringing in critically needed food and water and carrying out rescue operations and support. A mainstay of American casual dining is going bankrupt. TGI Fridays helped make Happy Hour famous, but today filed for Chapter 11. In a statement, the company blamed it on the financial fallout from the pandemic, but it added... Many of its restaurants will stay open as they get through these tough times. Come Tuesday, all eyes will be on the biggest battleground state of all, Pennsylvania. And this time around, a critical county in this critical state has new high tech to speed up the vote count. Our Julie Serkin got a behind the scenes look. The ballots counted in this small room in Erie, Pennsylvania could decide the presidential election. This is where all the magic happens. 
In 2020, it took Erie County four days to count all the ballots. This time around, County Clerk Karen Chilcott isn't taking any chances. Since 2020, we've purchased a lot of equipment. Nearly $900,000 in new equipment and other improvements to count ballots faster. So the sorting machine that you see there, and we have a couple of openers for the ballots over here. The sorter verifies the completed ballot's authenticity. It then cross-checks voter identification and automatically catalogs the ballots. I believe this is more secure. They've also hired more staff. In 2020, election workers had to hand sort. My goodness, so that must have taken a long time. Pennsylvania is one of the last battlegrounds to start counting ballots. On election day at 7 a.m., we start opening the ballots. But you can't count them yet. Correct. The four days it took to get a final tally in 2020 gave way to conspiracy theories and unprecedented legal challenges. So you're going to fill out your ballot? So this year, they've also taken steps to be more transparent while keeping their workers safe. So you call this the fishbowl? It's kind of like an aquarium. They've installed windows so poll watchers can see election workers tallying the ballots. They want to be right uh, behind and watching people when they're opening the ballots. Even with all of the new equipment and security improvements, the lines are still long here at the elections office in Erie County, filled with many voters who say they haven't received their requested mail-in ballots. Why are you prepared with a book and tea? Because I was sure the wait would be long because so many people haven't gotten their ballots in the mail. Both parties sued the county board of elections after an estimated 13 to 17,000 voters who requested a ballot never received one. Karen Chilcott says the board of elections is working with the Department of State and the Postal Service to get ballots to those voters. It's so disappointing. We've prepared so much over the past few months to pull this all together. Despite the pressure, she says her team is ready. Erie County could decide this election. How does that feel? We're so focused on what we need to do here that we really haven't been influenced by any of that. Julie Serkin, NBC News. When we come back, there's good news tonight. A high school football player surprises that brought teachers to, to tears. <laughs> there's good news tonight. So often the good news doesn't get as much attention as the bad. So every Saturday we highlight the many people who spread joy and love. These are just some of those stories this week. This moment gives new meaning to the word homecoming. That's Brady, Texas high school senior Amory Stidham on the field as part of the homecoming court. And Father Chief Petty Officer Hicks. When she's surprised by her military dad, Chief Petty Officer Fabian Hicks, who's been deployed overseas for more than a year. In Kentucky, that's 11-year-old Taylor Swift superfan Henry Henson showing off his Eras Tour Halloween costume. His mom, Erin, posted it online where it caught the eye of Taylor's team. And then... I got a message from Taylor Nation. <laughs> You're going to the Eras Tour. <laughs> <laughs> that show last night, a dream come true for Henry, a wheelchair user who's been through 21 surgeries for spina bifida. I'm just incredibly grateful that Henry was seen in that moment, not as a child with a disability, but just as a fan. We'd like you to meet your blood stem cell donor. <laughs> and talk about meeting your heroes. That's cancer survivor Carolyn Binker at a Florida Panthers hockey game, finally getting to hug the man she says saved her life. Just a flood of emotion. Eric Hogan donated his stem cells so that Carolyn could have a second chance. Oh my God. This is crazy. Here is this person that did something so that I could continue to be with my family. Thanks for making an impact. And in West Des Moines, Iowa. What? Surprise after surprise. <laughs> that really means a lot to me. Huh? Football players from Valley High School honoring their favorite teachers, giving them their jerseys, thanking them for all they've done. 
<laughs> Assistant Principal Haley Hawkinsmith overwhelmed by Gage Olson's gift. She provided me with a safe space to go to when I need to talk about anything. Thank you for making an impact on my educational journey. What is it about her that makes her so special and really so accessible to, to all of you? She's just so open to like all the kids no matter what. And um, it just really brings like a smile to my face. <laughs> Hawkins Smith, what were you feeling? For me, um, it was the push that I needed in a hard part of the year to know that the work that we do is good. <laughs> and a big thank you to teachers everywhere for all you do. That's NBC Nightly News for this Saturday. Holly Jackson will be here tomorrow night. I'm Jose Diaz Blair. Thank you for the privilege of your time and good night. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.